Last week we talked about what TypeScript is and how it works. During that tutorial, we mentioned that it's a compiled language, meaning you can't just load up a .ts file in the browser and expect it to work. No, instead you'll need to install a global module that allows you to both check your TypeScript files for errors and compile them down to plain old JavaScript. We're going to do that today and then experiment some more with how TypeScript works. You're going to need Node.js installed for this tutorial. The latest long-term stable version will do fine, which as of right now is 10.16.3. If you're unfamiliar with Node.js and want a primer, I humbly suggest checking out JS Quick Hits 31. All good? Let's get TypeScript installed. Head to a terminal window or command prompt and type the following. Let that do its thing and you're done. You have everything you need to compile TypeScript files. Of course, there are all kinds of ways to integrate TypeScript with Webpack or other bundlers, but that's outside the scope of this tutorial. For now, we're just going to manually run the compiler each time, and then run our JS files in the Node console to see their output. On that note, let's create a new TypeScript file called, I don't know, example.ts. Creative, I know. Last week, we showed how it might be beneficial to use TypeScript to specify that a function parameter was supposed to be a number to avoid any NAN issues. We're going to build on that a bit today by showing some other types you can use and talk about what TypeScript is doing for us. With that in mind, let's start out with some sample data. How about Manchester Orchestra albums? Yes, I know that last boolean is a string. We'll get to that. For now, let's just do something with the data, like this. Let's go ahead and save that. The nice thing about TypeScript is that the vast majority of it just looks like, and is, regular JavaScript. That's why Microsoft calls it a typed superset of JavaScript rather than a brand new language. Everything you're used to doing in JavaScript will work as expected. You just might need to write some type definitions to help it along. Okay, so that's great, but we want to actually run this code. To do that, we switch back to our terminal or command prompt and run the compiler with this command. That'll take a second, and it'll generate a second file, example.js, in the same folder. I'm not going to show you what the compiled output looks like every time, but let's look at it now. One thing you'll note here, beyond that it converted all of our newer ES syntax back down to ES5, aka vanilla JS, is that it is not doing any type checking. There's no if type of title equals string happening. TypeScript does not add type checking to your finished JS. Instead, it does type checking at compile time, so it doesn't need to add type checking to the result. It already knows that everything we're passing to log even years has the correct types. This means if we're working with outside data, we still need to do additional work to make sure that we're not trying to manipulate a string as if it were a number, or similar. TypeScript does provide some tools to help with that, but there are limits to what it can do with data it can't actually see. So, sorry, you're still going to have to follow good practices when you code. This isn't a get out of jail free card. Let's run that code. Still in the terminal, type the following. Helps to actually be in the terminal. There we go. Let's create a TypeScript error so we can see the output when the compile fails. Back in example.ts, below everything you've written so far, make sure you're not working in example.js, by the way, close that. Add this code. You can see that VS Code is already showing our TypeScript error, but let's go ahead and try recompiling. Yep, we get the following error. Argument of type string or boolean is not assignable to parameter of type boolean. Type string is not assignable to type boolean. Sort of makes sense. Note, TypeScript will still compile your code. This is a bit of a double-edged sword. Your example.js file now has the new, potentially broken code. You can configure TypeScript not to output code if there are errors, and for any app that was actually headed to a production environment, I'd probably recommend that. But for now, it doesn't really matter. Let's just fix that one boolean that's a string, changing it from true in quotes to just true. 
Go ahead and save the file again and rerun the compile. Much better. No errors this time, and we can run node example.js and see our new output, which looks like that. So, cool. Still a lot to cover, although this series isn't going to get too complex. I promised you a gentle introduction after all. Next week we'll look at specifying multiple possible types for a variable, and depending on how long that runs, we might jump into increased complexity by taking a look at interfaces. See you then!